the turn of the century, Peaky Blinders were tearaways. They used to sew razor blades into their caps. When those same kids came back from the Second World War, they became more organised and more dangerous, but they were still known as Peaky Blinders. So the Peaky Blinders were gangsters. It's her? This is her? The girl who tells fortunes. At the time, Birmingham was this huge industrial powerhouse, which was producing more manufactured goods than pretty much anywhere else in the world. Guns, cars, everything. So it was a 24 hour a day factory, mm. producing very hard men uh, during very hard times. They're doing a magic spell to make a winner race. The horse's name is Monaghan Boy. Kempton, three o'clock, Monday. You ladies have a bet yourselves, but don't tell anyone else. The whole series is from family legend of um, my dad's uncles were illegal bookmakers. My mum, when she was about nine years old, worked for an illegal book as a runner. Um, and so I got these tantalising visual snapshots of this glamorous unknown dangerous world that was central Birmingham so you know there was a there was a, a contrast between what people normally think of and what I knew to have happened and when I did the research found that it was even more extraordinary and there were gunfights there were knife fights there were turf wars between gangs in London and Birmingham primarily um, and so I discovered that r far from exaggerating these stories you know from my parents they'd underplayed it Tommy Tommy Tommy, look at the book. Yeah, just look. Tommy! All on one of them, boy. Good work, John. Tommy! Get in here. Now. I read the, the first two episodes and I was just completely knocked out by them. They were just amazing and I had to be in it, you know? I really wanted to play the, the character and I had done television years and years ago, but it never to this level, you know, and to be able to immerse yourself in a character is complex and contradictory and alluring and flawed and all of those elements. You know, I think you have to take into account where we meet Tommy, which is sort of, you know, a year after the, the, the end of the First World War, and he's just carrying those experiences around with him, and he's self-medicating like he's boozing, and he's smoking opium, and he's dealing with it. But it's crippled him kind of emotionally, but he's putting all that pain or whatever it may be into his, this ambition for this family that he has and this drive that he has. He's this very, very complex individual, and we see this, this drive causes all sorts of repercussions throughout the family and throughout, throughout the, the community. <laughs> Are you lead boys laughing at my brother? Are ya? Hey! Tommy! Tommy! I asked you come a on. question. Tommy, come on, it's just a crack. Get your family out of here, go and enjoy yourselves at the fair before they start a war. I think gang culture is the same as royal family culture, it's the same as parliamentary culture, it's the same anywhere where you have a power structure, um, anywhere where you have a family, you're going to find exactly the same conflicts but expressed in different ways. So I think Tommy's struggle is to take a family who are sort of content to do things in a fairly haphazard way that works and change it and change the whole family. So whenever that happens in the business, in the family, whatever, it will always be the same. Boy I love is looking at me. Can't you see him standing there waving his handkerchief as merry as a robin that sings on the tree? The second series I'm working on already and the plan is to take it as far as it will go and, and it's effectively Tommy's story and the quest I suppose the big question because it's a very English question is can someone with his roots from his class ever escape we haven't had singing in here since the war what do you think that is Ali that kind of being cut off and being restricted and claustrophobic and not having sound. Porn is the backdrop to it. It's about a relationship. Mm -hmm.
Your girl is gonna be a star. The movie's meant to be an allegory for class warfare and rich and poor. 